All right, everybody. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Um, glad to see everybody. We got a good turnout, and um, you know, I'm excited to talk about this topic here. I don't profess to be a um, you know full blown expert or know everything about solar panels, um, but it is something that is becoming more and more common, and uh, there's a lot of working parts to getting these things transferred in a transaction. So, you know, with any real estate transaction or talking to people, it's all about asking the right questions. And um, I'm gonna start it off by, you know, going through some of the questions that I wrote down that I think are important to ask up front when you're, you're dealing with a property that has solar panels. So the first one I wrote down is, are the panels owned outright? Are they leased? Or are they under some type of loan or purchase agreement? Uh, that's a very important question to know because um, you know if they're not owned outright, this lease or purchase agreement is gonna go against any buyer that is looking to purchase that property's debt to income ratio. And that may not be known upfront by the buyer's agent, unless you disclose that as the listing agent. So for example, somebody you know in this market who's stretching what they can afford to compete and um, you know tries to compete against other offers may get selected to win um, that property. In moving forward, they didn't realize that uh, you know they had to qualify for an additional loan or lease agreement. Uh, that goes against their debt to income ratio. It's kind of like buying a car, you know, within a transaction. Obviously, that can make things complicated. Um, if it is leased or that it's under a purchase agreement, my second question I wrote down is uh, what does that agreement look like? You know, that's also important to know. You want to know whether these lease payments increase during the end of the loan. Uh, that's apparently pretty common amongst these lease, leases. A lot of people sign up for these leases with the intention of taking the lower payment up front for the lease and um, being subject to an increase later in the term because they're expecting energy prices to rise over the next 10 to 15 years. So up front, you know, they take the benefit of having a lower payment and um, help pay off, you know, their initial investment. The, uh, the next question I wrote down, which is important to know, is who made the panels, who installed them? You know, you always want to do a quick Google search. You know, not every manufacturer or brand is equal or the same. You want to know if there's been any issues or problems related to those panels. Um, next, how old are they and how old's the roof? It's important to know how old the panels are because there are a life expectancy to them. And obviously if you're representing a buyer, you want to have that information. So, you know, they can expect to either A, replace them going forward and um, B, planned for that um, budget of replacement. Also, you know, how old's the roof? Because if the roof wasn't replaced when they put the panels on, you could have a problem where your panels outlast the life expectancy of your roof and you're gonna incur a great expense of taking the panels off, replacing the roof, putting them back on. Um, so you definitely wanna ask that question too. Lastly, I wrote down, what do the electric bills look like? To have a, a clean, smooth transaction and no problems at the end, you want to know all the details. So get the details from the owner as to what the, the bills look like, what are the costs, what are the savings. That way you can accurately you know, pass that information along to the buyer and um, there's no disclosure issues. So that's uh, the questions that I wrote down. I know Kong has had some recent transactions here with um, solar panels and some good experience. So I'd like to pass it over to him 
to tell us about those transactions. Thanks, Brooks. And um, interestingly enough, the two deals I had happened pretty much back to back this past uh, fall in November through December. And both of them involved a company called Sonova. And both of them had pretty much the same type of lease concept, except their contracts were completely different uh, in the way they were structured and, and the payments and everything like that. So again, very important to read or get a copy of the contract from the seller so that you know what they had signed up for, whether they know it or not. Um, a couple of things that you had mentioned, um, the first thing I wrote down here on my list too is again, what kind of solar uh, panels do you have? Are they owned or leased? If they're owned uh, and it's already paid outright, that's probably like the simplest deal. That's what you kind of hope for. But many of these are leased because they're so expensive. Um, we're talking like fifty to hundred thousand dollars worth in, in solar panels there. So uh, most people don't own them outright. It's a lease. <clears throat> If it's a lease, um, again, you have to check with the buyer's lender to make sure that they can qualify for that um, lease, as well as a credit check, too, because they run a credit check. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's on the verge of a 640 credit score and the lender is only approving them because of that, um, you do a credit check and it goes below that, that could hinder your deal as well. Um, also, within the contract, you have to write in there somewhere something to protect both sides, whoever you you um, represent, because the solar lease could be or is a lien against the property. So, you know, that that part about giving clear title, um, you have to somehow write into the contract about the solar panels and you know, how, how you're going to clean that up um, to give clear title. Um, one other thing I wrote here, um, a draft copy of the deed, okay? Now, once the seller gives the buyer permission to speak with the solar company, um, the solar company is going to ask for a draft copy of the deed, not signed, but just what it will be and what it will look like so that they can initiate the uh, release of a UCC lien, okay? Now, when they release this lien, it's actually both times it came in an email to myself and the seller and it happened very fast um, because the seller was very prompt in, in getting all the info and the, and the buyer was very prompt in talking to the solar company and doing the credit check and everything. So the faster both parties work towards that, the faster you can get that um, lien release temporarily so that you can go to settlement, okay? Um, one other thing after settlement, this is a very important um, step. After settlement, get a copy of the recorded deed and either the buyer or the seller has to submit that to the solar company so that the transfer can be completed. If you don't do that, then it's still in the seller's name, okay? So the last step, and it's after settlement, is get a copy of the recorded deed from the title company and submit that to the solar company, okay? Um, also, if you get a contract on a house with solar and it's less than 30 days, probably not gonna happen. You need at least 30 days for this whole transfer to occur with the, the solar company. So typically a 45 day settlement would be nice. Um, you know, it just doesn't happen that fast. Fortunately for us, both my experience, I think they were within like 21 to 24 days right around there just because uh, they weren't as busy during that time um, of the year. But any other time you'll call them and they'll, they'll say, we need 30 days to complete this from this, the day the buyer initiates the phone call.
So that's about it, Brooks. That's that's all I have. So, but uh, you know, Seth is here to help you as well. He's seen some of these deals go through, and um, you know, they vary from from company to company, but they all pretty much follow the same format, kind of like what I just had outlined. So, what happens if uh, you don't want them? <laughs> a lease. Yeah, like like you buy a house and they have a lease. I mean, can you get rid of it? Okay, so here's what happened on the second deal. Um, it was a very unsellable house, even in this market, but somebody actually wanted it, but they didn't want the solar panels. So the seller called and unbeknownst to them, again, they, don't, they didn't read the contract. They had only had them installed 18 months ago, okay? So there was no buyout at that point. So what the seller ended up doing was, well, they took the, the remaining lease amount, which was $120 a month, multiplied it by you know how many ever months was left, and it worked out to being $33,000, Tim. And they said, we'll pay the 33 grand if you transfer. You mean they, they moved them to their new house? No, meaning they gave it to the buyer. The, they, they asked the buyer to transfer it into the buyer's name, but they're going to dump 33 grand into that account so that it's pretty much paid for for the next 25 years. So they basically got free electric. So why would anybody do this? That's my question. Because they, well, why these, anybody... people, well, these people wanted to get out of the house, but it's so hard to get them off there there really is no buyout and if there is it's pretty tremendous so you have to be very careful and again every company is different so i'm just speaking from what i've seen with sonova uh, these people had to pretty much pay for it in a way that the buyer was comfortable with it so these people nobody were, wanted them these people are paying monthly for 20 some years to get a lower electric bill. Right. That makes a lot of sense. The numbers obviously have to work, but um, <laughs> there, you know, an additional thing when you, you know, approach maybe a buyout or taking, removing the solar panels, you also have to consider that the roofs might be comp compromised at that point and need replaced. So, that has to come into negotiation and considered budgeting for a roof replacement because a lot of times when they're installed, um, shingles may be compromised and um, can't be repaired if you're taking them down, obviously. Quick question, Colin, with your experience since you've done two deals, was were either of those properties appraised? Was there an appraised value for those solar panels? Actually, I think we... Um, I forget if it was uh, at one of the Gohara meetings that an appraiser was there and somebody had mentioned, asked an appraiser what the value was on these solar panels. And uh, the lady laughed and she said, uh, if I give you $2,500 for a solar panel, that's a gift. Okay. And then <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that par or somebody is going to come up with a, the seller's property disclosure getting all this information from the, the homeowners, I would think, at some, yeah. on their forms committee or whatever. Right. <clears throat> yeah, again, it's very important to, to uh, going back to the agreement of sale, somewhere in the contract, you have to put down that, uh, you know, the, the, the solar panels are a leased item, um, but they are remaining with the house. And somewhere in the contract you have to write in there that the buyer is going to follow these steps to make sure that the transfer is completed at settlement now or else guys, tell the story if you don't mind real quick about the lender you know because all of a sudden you have to remember if your people <laughs> are on the cusp of qualifying for this loan to buy this house now they have to qualify with that as an additional debt, right? Yep. Oops, um. mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Brooks did mention that earlier. I, this was uh, on the one house in Lower Paxton that I had. We had multiple offers on it. And then when I started calling the lenders and telling them that, hey, your buyer is going to accrue a credit check and another $116 a month debt because of the lease payments, um, is that going to be okay? And the one lender actually was the highest offer at the time, number wise, um, because actually it's kind of suspicious because their um, interest rate range at that time, interest rates was like three and a quarter. And their interest rate was 3.75 to four and a half. So I kind of figured they must not be the best credit wise and uh, called their lender. And they said, don't do anything. You know, don't make them check their credit. They'll have to do that afterwards. Well, you can't do it afterwards because we need to release the lien so that we can settle. And you can't settle without that. So it's like a catch 22. Okay. You did a great job, though, of calling the people ahead of time and informing them of that. That way it wasn't a problem. A lot yeah, of time get... that goes by the wayside and it becomes a problem later in the deal. Well, that, Brooks, just goes back to that multiple offer spreadsheet. When you lay it all out and look at everything and you see everybody with 2.75 interest rate and one party with three and a half and you wonder to yourself, why are they getting such a high interest rate? <laughs> sure. Good or bad stories, is there anybody that has else that has, has recently had an experience with the transfer of solar panels that they would like to tell us about? Yeah. So I, yeah. Go ahead. go ahead, John. I was just going to say mine wasn't recent, uh, but I dealt with some leased panels. It was probably four or five years ago. And uh, to one of your questions, I don't remember the name of the company, but they were willing to remove the panels from one house and put those panels on the roof of the house that the sellers were buying to the point that they literally went out to their new house, uh, did some surveys of the sun and, and whatnot and said, yeah, absolutely. The panels will work. We'll move them. Here's the price we'll pay to move them. So we actually listed it. Uh, with the understanding that the panels could stay or they could go. The seller was willing to go either way on that, depending on how, how solid the offer was. Um, and the second part of that was I ended up knowing more about those panels uh, with regard to the contract than the sellers did. They had no idea what was in that contract. Right. And uh, so I kind of found myself also trying to sell these leased panels to the buyer's agent and uh, quickly realized this is completely out of my realm and put them in touch with the solar panel company themselves and the actual guy that sold the panels to the sellers. So that kind of worked because it removed me from that situation. He could explain it much better. And we did end up closing on that one. Okay, good. Thank you. Is there anybody else that has had any recent? Uh... Yes, yeah, Stacy has her hand up. Um, okay. Stacy, you want to jump in? Yeah, so I sold, um, I've sold a couple houses uh, locally with solar panels, but the one that was the most um, beneficial to the buyer um, was, was, I would say, uh, I guess in 2020, they bought a house, the solar panels were already completely paid for. And so the transition was easy, but what the, um, the new buyer found was that after they moved in and got everything switched over, they were collecting so much energy that they were allowed to sell back so much of that energy. And they actually made a few hundred dollars, they're still making a few hundred dollars every month off of the energy that they don't use because they're collecting so much where their house sits. So, while it kind of stinks for the owners in the middle of that transfer, it can be beneficial later on for the new buyers once those panels are paid off. Okay. And the life expectancy guys of these panels again is how much? Kong, they're around 20, 
five to thirty yeah, years. I, think. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say it's about the same as a roof. Yeah. Um, and you can um, you can get like maintenance programs on them where every couple years they come out and they basically assess each of the panels to make sure that they're not cracking and needing to be replaced ahead of time. But it's it's very similar to a roof. Yeah. Seth, uh, based on your experience with uh, with these solar panels, do they all all the companies allow you to sell into the grid, or do they? You know, it was my understanding that most of them keep that uh, profit for themselves. Do you have any experience otherwise? So that's a very good question. So um, backing up on what Stacy said, that. I do believe that by law, when a homeowner or a business produces an excess amount of electricity, it has to be sold back to the grid via your local producer. So even if you owned a grist mill or a wind farm or solar companies, if you're making too much money, too much energy, it has to be sold back. Now that's different if you're leasing the solar panels. So there's a whole, like what Kong mentioned before with Sonova, those panels were leased. And you have to be very careful about what kind of contract the homeowner has entered into. Meaning are the panels going to be leased forever? Or is there a demarcation of when the panels are given to the owner. So in short, you just got to, when, when we're selling these listings, we got to see the, the lease or paperwork up front. And Kong did a great job when he had those two properties, but we had to be very clear on if it's leased or or not does that help is there is there an average time period that these leases run for do they run for 10 years 15 years what what do you know about that so i've seen about a, a 10 year uh, i think is the average however uh and i can't remember where but there was there was a 20 year lease also so you know it's kind of uh ironic that these solar panels last for about 20 years and the lease is 20 years. So every single company, whether it's Sonova or Tesla, there's a few other ones out there, they're all a little bit different. Tesla is extremely easy to work with. And I think Kong had a good, um, I, I think when he worked with Sonova, I think they were pretty easy with them, with him also. What, what about the homeowner's uh, insurance end of it? Is there a separate rider for those? Or who's, say you have a hailstorm and, you know, I don't know, a couple panels get busted. Who's, who's responsible for that? Or is that in the contract? Well, it's a very good question because you have to make certain if you're leasing them or if you're going to lease to own or own them outright. So, in fact, uh, you probably should check with your insurance company, but if you're under a homeowners association or a condo, you have to make certain that you can get approved by that association before you even want to proceed to install them as well. Any other questions? It's a good point, though, Seth, with the uh, HOAs, just to make sure, you know, not necessarily a condo, but if you're in a development that has an HOA, do they have a restriction against that or not? That is definitely something you'd want to check. What's that, Tim, with installing one? Yeah. Actually, I think we'll have to look it up, but I think there's actually a law that forbids an HOA from saying you can't get clean energy okay. or a form of clean energy. Um, I don't think an HOA can say, no, you can't install solar panels. 
I think the only thing they can specify is where the, the solar panels are viewed from, from the road. So you can't be looking at the house necessarily and seeing the structure. Well, there again, you would have to determine whether the HOA is responsible for the roof or not. If they're responsible for the roof, I think they would have a big say in whether you can put solar panels up or not. I know the association that I belong to um, down at the shore will not allow you to do solar panels. So I, it, it would be good if there is an association involved that you check with them. Look, this, this whole situation tells us loud and clear, if you get involved in solar panels, you better do a little homework and investigate this thing thoroughly or else you're going to get yourself in a large oh, yeah. jam. Anybody else? I got a quick question. You guys have been talking about leasing solar panels. I don't know if I missed this topic or not, but what if it, what if the panels are already owned or, or not leased or there's some type of payment plan to own them as opposed to uh, leasing them? <laughs> it's, uh, Sorry it's about that. Can I jump in there? Somebody farming some chickens? <laughs> That's my ringtone. <laughs> Actually, Joe, I think we mentioned earlier about um, when you go and, and ask the seller if they own or, or lease it, and if they say they own it and they own it outright, that's like the easiest scenario for you. Uh, but they own it and are on a payment of some sort. Um, you have to, again, check the contract to see if one, they can remove it and take it with them, or two, how does the if, if we have to uh, pass it on to the buyer, how do we go about doing that? And, and it's probably the same way as a lease is they'll have to qualify for that loan amount. Gotcha. Through, who, through whoever is financing it. So, yeah. Okay. Very good. Thanks. I have a bad story if anybody wants to hear it. Sure. Uh, Morningstar flea market spent over a million dollars to put in a solar farm because they were told that they could sell it back to the utility company plus they would get a tax credit and neither one happened and it caused uh, them to go bankrupt because they invested so much money in this flea farm or in the uh, solar farm and they had a their job was to take and keep the, the uh, panels clean so they got a couple llamas in there to eat, eat the shrubberies and stuff but it was really a bad situation for the owner of that. Anybody else have a story? Good or bad? Don't forget what, when we're talking about these leases, we also have to remember um, fuel tank leases like propane tanks and water softeners and that stuff. Some of that stuff's leased too. So like my father said and Seth said, when you, you get a listing that has you know, either solar panels, a propane tank that's buried, or a water softener, you need to make sure to find out whether or not that system is leased or owned. So, other I mean, than that, it, Brooks, go ahead. Would, would it be wise if you have a property that you're listing with solar panels to actually take that contract and put it online with all the other associated documents? I think that's a great idea. To be I agree, yeah. As Jim Goldsmith would say, disclose, disclose, disclose. The more you do that, the be more beneficial it is to you as a listing agent. Well, good job, Brooks, unless there's somebody else that has something okay. they want to add to it. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Dad, any final remarks? Just that, you know, we are a very responsible person and company to the people that we contract with for listings and for sales as buyers agents and listing agents. Please do your due diligence. Just don't fill out the paperwork. As you can see here, some of these 
things that are serious, serious issues. Not everybody knows everything about them. Let's be the experts and the expert company that really is above the rest of them. And, and that's really why you hire REMAX agents. So great job, everybody on this call. This was important. Have a great day. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Brooks. Yep, thank you, guys.